Okay, Chris, I think I figured it out. Um, I, I change use the three dots in the chat and I change it to everyone publicly and privately. And okay. I don't know why it, 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 it defaults to no one. Yeah, because that's not how I have it set. Yeah, and that's um, why the, it, like the, when you set up all those things pre meeting, it really sometimes yeah. doesn't make any difference. That's why I go into the meeting and change them once the meeting starts. Hi, Jen. Hey, I'm just gonna go grab my AirPods. All right. And Chris, are you are you uh, moderating. facilitating? You're moderating. Okay, so I'm gonna make you a co-host. Uh, would you make me the host? Oh, you want to be the host? Okay. Yeah, so I can do breakout rooms and stuff if she wants. Okay, because in the in the settings that whoever did it said do you stay or the responsibilities stay the host. Yeah, but I if think you're hosting. If I'm hosting, I can't do. If I'm just a co-host, I can't do stuff. Okay, so if you can if you can make me a co-host and I'll I'm gonna stay here, uh -huh. um, I, but I you know I might pop into a different session. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey Jen. Hey, hey. All right, what do you need from me? I think I'm good. Do we know how many? Thank you. All right, you guys. So if you need, definitely you're going to want to have this presentation. Like I said, I put it in the chat. It's just case sensitive, the S and the E. Start with a capital letter. Um, this will give you access to all these templates, speaker notes, and more. And then as I, as I like am working on stuff and updating it, this presentation will update automatically. So it'll give you even more resources as I'm adding to it. Um, if you ever have any questions, you can email me. This is my email address. And then also, this is my website. And um, on my website, I actually have um, some of my Zooms that I've recorded in the past. So I actually have like a getting started with Seesaw, um, a Seesaw Next Steps, and things like that. So if you're like, oh, I want to learn more just about Seesaw and not so much the Edge Protocols, check out my website because I have a ton of um, tutorials on there already made, ready to go to watch. So I definitely want that website too. What we're gonna go ahead and do is since it's small, this is great. I wanna make this really interactive. Um, I know like I learned from actually getting to play and do and use. So I'm gonna actually have you guys sign in as students to a Seesaw account. Um, so you can actually play with the Edu protocols and really see them in action. So if you already have a Seesaw account, you have two choices. Um, what I would do is go to your Seesaw. So you go to app.seesaw.me and you'll have to sign out of your teacher account, which I'll show you exactly how to do right now. And then you're gonna sign in as a student. So I'm gonna walk you through that because sometimes signing out of Seesaw is way trickier than it should be. It's kind of a hard, um, hard to find. So what you do is you go to app.seesaw.me and it will bring you to your, if you already have an account, it will bring you to your class. To sign out of your teacher account, which I will make sure you sign back in, so don't worry about that. You click on your name and you click on the little gear wheel thing and you click sign out. So like I said, it's kind of hard to find the sign out button. That's why when kids say they sign out, I'm like, you had to really work hard to sign out because it's not easy to do. So the sign out is, is all the way over here. So just to walk you through that again, you click your name, the little wheel, and then sign out. Again, it like really asks you, are you sure you wanna sign out? You say, yes, I wanna sign out. And that's really so, it's because um, since so many younger students use this, they wanna make it so like your kids stay logged in so it's easier for you. So it's kind of cool for us to know like, once your kids are signed in, it's really hard for them to sign out. So once you sign out, or if you don't have an account and you went to app.seesaw.me, this is the screen that you see. So what you're going to click is, I'm a student. We're gonna be students today. I'm a student. And you're gonna ignore this part right here and go to where it says text code. So we're gonna ignore this Google part for a second and go to where it says text code. I'm gonna get you the code. And you're gonna go ahead and enter this code. I'm gonna read it to you just in case too. H T B M Z X Q F. You're gonna enter that code and click the green go. 
Once you click that green go, you're going to click continue with Google at the top. You do not need to fill all this information out. All you do is click continue with Google. And you're going to pick your account you want to sign in with. You can pick any of your Google accounts that pop up. So you're going to go ahead and sign in with Google. And once you do that, you're now in my class. So it's really easy to sign in. And I'm going to sign in and see that you guys did that. Of course, it's not wanting to cooperate for me. Let's go back. Okay, give me one second. I'm going to stop sharing because it's being complicated for me to sign in. Yay, technology. It'll be okay. I just got to do it one more. We're all used to this. Yes. <laughs> there we go. All right. I just needed to refresh it. And let me get back to sharing my screen. Thank you for your patience. So hopefully you guys all got in. I'm going to check right now. And if you need help, let me know too. Okay, so we're in our edge protocols. Perfect. I have all of you guys in the class. So that's awesome. And you can see it automatically puts your names in here and everything like that. So now you're in my class and we're going to have some fun with some of the protocols. Really quickly, if you don't have Seesaw Plus, you definitely want it. It gives you way more features. Um, everything I show you today, I will make sure that I'm very specific on what is free and what is plus. Everything I'm gonna show you, you can do with the free version, but the plus version has a lot more options. The biggest reason to get the plus version is for the activities. And the free version, you can only have 100 activities, but you can like delete them. Like when you're done with them, you can go through and delete and then keep getting more. But with Plus, you get up to 500. And then with Seesaw for Schools, you get unlimited. So if you don't have Plus, this is directions on how to get it for free. You can just follow these directions and it will walk you through step by step on how to get it for free. If you've already used the 60 day free trial, you can scan this code and get a free one. And the directions for that are right here too. If we have time, I'll show you, but I wanna spend most of the time on the actual protocols. Within Seesaw itself, you have all these different tools. You've got a camera, you have a drawing canvas, you can record live video up to five minutes. You can actually record live video up to five minutes on multiple slides also. You can upload anything from Google. What's cool is you can upload anything like, say you do a Google Slides presentation, you can upload that to Seesaw and now make it interactive. So kids can draw on top of it. Kids can record live video on top of it. Um, they can annotate lots of cool things that they can do. So like when I want my students presenting, especially in a virtual environment now, I can have them still build their presentation in Google if I want to. And then I can have them add video to each slide to present each slide. So it makes it like a pretty cool presentation. Within the drawing canvas, these are just like some things that will show you. Um, these are all the tools within the drawing canvas. So you can zoom in, you can hide the tools because sometimes they get in your way. You can, there's a little undo button and redo button. You can add labels. You can record your voice while creating. So you can click the microphone and draw and talk at the same time, which is awesome for explaining your mathematical thinking or reading fluency, anything like that. You can take up to like 25 pictures on one canvas to make a collage. So like, for example, let's say you're learning all about the letter A and you want them to find pictures of things that start with the letter A instead of giving them a worksheet, they could take up to 25 pictures of different things that start with the letter A and they could even add labels and try to spell the words the best that they could. So lots of cool things you can do with that. You can add, like I said, live video and you can also upload video from other places. So if you made a video in Screencastify or you record a Zoom lesson, as long as it's under 10 minutes, you can actually upload that to, to your, to your um, Seesaw canvas also. They have shapes, backgrounds, and you can hyperlink. They also have a caption where you can do voice caption or writing, which is really great for our younger students who aren't writing yet. And they have all these different types of pens. Over here where it says multiple pages, that is a paid feature. So in order to actually have multiple pages, you do have to have Seesaw Plus 
or Seesaw for schools, but you can just have one page things. You can also, with the free version, if other people have created multiple page activities, you can still assign them and use them. You just can't create your own or have your kids creating your own. The other one that's a paid feature is draft. Um, but with, with the free version, what the kids can do is submit and they can go back and edit their item. But draft is nice because it doesn't like notify you. So you don't think like their work is done. They literally are just drafting it and they can go back later. So it's a really nice plus feature, but there's workarounds for the free version too. So now that you kind of have a little overview, and that's a really quick overview of Seesaw, let's get into some of the protocols. One of um, the protocols that we use a lot is the Frere model. I use this a lot with my class, and it's all about getting your kids to quickly explain what their understanding is, right? So in first grade, we learn a lot about living things and non-living things, and one of our vocabulary words that we really teach and, and discuss and we want them to master is mammals. We want them to understand the different types of animals and things like that. So after we do our whole unit on mammals, I wanna see what they know. I teach first grade, right? So there's, especially right now in the beginning of the year, a lot of writing is hard for them. They're still learning. I have kids who, are, who still don't know their letter sounds, right? So I can't expect them to complete an entire paragraph in each of these boxes. But with Seesaw, I can let them do things a couple, other, a couple different ways. So you can see here, they can do text boxes. They can also do pictures and they can also do video. So I'm going to assign this template to you. This is one of my templates. And if you have this presentation open, when you click on this, the link will pop up for you to open up. And you will be able to save this activity to your library and assign it. So it's already made for you, ready to go. So definitely make sure you have this presentation. I'm gonna actually show you, um, I'm gonna assign it to you right now. And if you don't know about Seesaw, um, really quickly, you can get uh, all these activities can get lost in a big black hole, kind of like your Google Drive. So instead of folders, they have what you call collections. You want to use these like you would your Google folders. So you can see I have like quite a few collections. This is going to help me be super organized to find what I need. So like right now I want to find my edge of protocols. I'm going to go right into here and find it. And now it's here, super fast for me to assign it. Otherwise, trust me, it would be like a big black hole and it takes you forever to find stuff. So I can assign to multiple classes at once or at one class at a time. I can also edit the students in the folders. So maybe if I didn't want to assign this to all my kids, I could just pick and choose. But for this, I want to assign it to all. A paid feature is schedule. This is worth it, honestly, um, because I know like I don't always want to schedule my, I want my assignments to post at a very certain time because I want to make sure the kids know what they're doing before they start working on them. So I always post them like my class starts at 8.30. I post their assignments for 8.40. So I know that they can't get on there too early so I can make sure like, especially in the beginning of the year, I'm teaching them how to do everything. So the schedule feature is really nice. Plus I can schedule like all the assignments for the whole week on Sunday and not have to think about it for the rest of the week. So the rest of the week, I can focus on the other million things that we're doing right now, right? Um, so if you can get the paid version, scheduling saves your life, I'm telling you. But for today, since we're doing this right now, I'm gonna assign it to you right now. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on your activities tab. So when you're in Seesaw, if you could click on your activities tab, and then you're gonna click add response. As a teacher, I get sample students. So when I wanna teach you guys how to do this, I get, I get to actually be a sample student and walk you through this as we're doing it um, and without like affecting anyone else's work, which is really awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and click sample student. You won't click anything because it knows who you are. So it's automatically pulling up your template, just like it would in Google. So now I'm gonna teach you guys how to do this, just like I would with my class, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the little hand at the bottom. There's a little hand with a finger pointing to a box. If you click on that, then you're gonna click two times on this light blue box in the middle. And the word we're talking about is mammals. So we're gonna write the word mammals together, right? And I'm gonna teach them how to do that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys your options and I'm gonna let you complete this activity. So what you can do is you can add your own labels and change the style. 
If you want to change the color of the boxes, you can. So if you want it to match, you can change the colors. You can add pictures, like if you have something from your camera roll. But what you're going to do is, what I want to show you is you can actually add a video. So for our kids who aren't writing yet, it's pretty cool how they can add a video of themselves explaining something. So maybe they want to do a video of non-essential characteristics. They can click on this camera and click on video. And the only reason mine came up yellow is because it's trying to use my, um, oh, it might be slow. I'm gonna not do it because I don't want to mess up my internet because I think I'm frozen now. <laughs> but um, you would just do video and you can record live video. Can you guys still hear me? I just want to make sure because my screen looks frozen to me. We can hear you. You're just kind of frozen. Okay. Yep. No problem. So to do the video, it's really simple. I just don't want to try to use too much bandwidth, but basically try to add a video. If you want to add pictures, this is the tricky part. This is where I have to teach the kids how to do this. So usually I just tell them to take pictures of things that they see. Mammals is a little bit harder, but like I might say to them like, oh, do you have any books that have mammals in them? Go to take a picture of something in your book because the teaching them teaching them this part is a little tricky in kinder and first grade when you're virtual in person it's a lot easier so what you're going to do if you want to just take pictures from google you have to open up a new tab like this and i'm going to look for non-examples so i'm going to find an image of a frog and i'm just going to copy the image and paste it on Seesaw. And the paste works just like it does on anything else where you can do control V. So to find pictures, you just have to open a new tab and maybe sneak. And then all you do is copy the image, oops, and paste it. So you have those choices. You can add labels, you can add pictures, and you can add video. So what I want you, oh, you can also just draw. So like, you can just draw, like you're, you can actually just write words, whatever a non-essential characteristic would be, okay? So those are your, those are all your choices. I'm gonna give you guys about two minutes to complete as much of this as you can. And if you have questions as you're doing it, you can unmute and ask your questions too. So I'm gonna give you about two minutes. When you're all done, you click the green check mark in the corner to upload your assignment. And then just let me know if you have any questions while you're working. So basically like I would do this with any of my really like my key vocabulary that I really want my younger kids to, to understand and master. I'm gonna check mark it. We've still got you, Jen. Awesome. And I don't see any questions. So just kind of work and then about another minute. Remember, it doesn't have to be completely perfect. Just want you to kind of see how you can use the tools to do this. Get some ideas for how you might use it in your own classroom. This is not the worst picture ever that is frozen on. It could be worse. That could be way worse. I... Yeah. 
You can see my 76 notifications. That's how many posts I still need to, I still need to grade from yesterday, but I will get to those. <laughs> I'm usually at zero. I'm it's usually at weekend. zero actually, but it's exactly, it's the weekend. It takes me a little longer. So guys, go ahead and click the green check mark. Just, um, it's okay if you didn't finish it, just to see what you did. And I wanna show you what it looks like on my end and kind of move on to the next protocol. Cause we've got some other really, really good ones too to go over. So click the green check mark. So now you can see it's showing me that I have two who are waiting for approval and two who did not do it yet. So I can review one by one and check it out. Um, but what I like to do usually, I really only use this feature for when I'm like trying to see who do I need to talk to, who, who is not doing their assignments, so I need to reach out. What I usually do is just go to journal and I just um, look at them all at once because it's faster. My workflow is faster that way. So here I can see some awesome things. People had some fun with the shapes. I can approve one by one or I can approve all. I'm gonna go ahead and appro approve all. And once I do that, you guys can see each other's work now. So when you go to journal, you can see each other's assignments really easily. So I don't have to like have my students share their fair model with each other. They can actually just come right on here and see each other's work. So it's really great for that collaboration aspect too and getting the kids to publish their work. When they know they're publishing their work to an audience, they want to work way harder on that. They love getting to show what they do. Jen, cool I have a question. Yeah. Uh, this is Monique, uh, I'm in kindergarten. Um, how did you say you are able to share? You, you said publish? So when I, all they do, like when I, when I approve the work, now mm -hmm. when you go to journal, you can see everybody's work. And the so kids that's can all. too? Like yeah, so like watch, if you, because consider right now, right now you're a student, mm -hmm. go to journal and you can come on here and see each other's work. Now you can turn that feature off also, but I like to let them see each other's work. So I keep it on. Thank you. And I just, anything that I'm grading, I don't put the grades right on here so that the kids don't see each other's grades. You know what I mean? But I like to let them see each other's work. So now if you go to journal, check it out. You can go see what other people did. Cause I have it set so you guys can see each other's work. And it automatically is set that way. If you don't want them to see each other's work, you just change it in the wrench. It will show you. Um, where it says students can see each other's work, you can just turn it off. These are where you can do all your cool tools. So that is the FAIR model. Um, that's just a way that you can use it in Seesaw. Here's a cool way that I do it like fast and curious with Quizlet and my vocabulary words. We would play a Quizlet together to like really master our vocabulary. And then I would give them a FAIR model where they take one of the words and they go and complete it on that word. But here's a fun one, fast and curious with math reps, okay? So math reps are really awesome because basically what the purpose of edu protocols and the math reps are is to constantly be giving the kids repetition because we know if they don't use it, they're going to lose it. And so we really want to make sure that we're constantly repeating the standards, not just teaching something and then never touching base with it again, especially in like K2 where number sense, letter, letter fluency, reading fluency, all of their basic skills are getting mastered. We need to constantly be repeating, repeating, repeating. So here's an example of a math reps template. This is, um, I did not create the math reps template. This is from Lisa. She's amazing. She makes all the math reps. Um, but I have a whole bunch of templates here for you. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what you would have to do for this. Okay. So on this assignment, I'm going to open it and save it and show you exactly what you would have to do. You would have to go to quizzes when, as a teacher, not as a student. As a student, this is no work at all for the kids, okay? But as a teacher, you're gonna have to go to quizzes. And um, I'll, sh I'll make sure you guys have access to all these templates, but I know I have math reps on here, so I'm gonna search. So I'm gonna do math reps for this one. You would find the quiz that you want to assign. I assign it as homework, just, I don't really give it to them as homework, but I just do it because I want them to be able to do it anytime they want. I don't necessarily want them to have to do it with me. When I'm in the classroom, I just start a live quiz and get the link. But when I'm doing it virtually, I assign it as homework so it gives them more flexibility. And I copy this link. 
when I have this activity open now, what you will do is click the three dots and copy and edit the activity. Because you don't want my link, you wanna get rid of my link and you wanna put your own link. The one I just copied, that, which you would get from your account. That's all you have to do is just change the link and save. And I'm gonna assign it to you so we can play this and I'll show you exactly how this works. Basically we use quizzes to make it really fun and to master it and keep repeating. And then when they're ready, they complete this template on Seesaw to show me what they learned. So I'm gonna assign this to you. And if you go to activities, click on the light bulb, you're gonna click on the quizzes link right here. So as a student, that's all they do. They just come on to the assignments and they click on this quizzes link. They have to click it two times. They'll enter their name. What's great about quizzes though, is teach them to turn read aloud on, especially if they're in those younger grades, it will read it to them. Now, I'm not sure if they would read it. I don't know if there's a way to do it in another language. That I'm not, I don't know the answer to that question, but that would be really good for the, for the French uh, dual immersion. That would be really awesome. I'm not sure if there is a way. I'm, Chris, do you know, is there, do they have multiple languages in quizzes? Not that I've seen. And I think that's something that they've been working on. That would be really cool if there is, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure mm. that there is either. Um, so you'll enter your name and you're gonna click start and it's literally gonna let you start playing. So go ahead and just click start and start the game again. And let's play quizzes. Question, which number makes this sentence true option? I'm not gonna. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn mine off so you can just listen to your questions because you're all going to have different questions at different times. So go ahead and play and I'll show you, I'll show you what it looks like on the teacher's end. So you can see on my end, I'm getting to see what you're doing right now. I'm getting to see your accuracy. Kelly is good at her math reps. You can see you get points based on accuracy and speed. There's a new lessons feature. I have not explored that yet. Have you done the uh, teacher paste quizzes? Yeah, I did that just the other day just to try it. Pretty cool. Yeah, I like that too. It helps you to like review. Like I like to use that when I'm teaching or like right before, you know, like reteaching something and I can help review what they don't know or something right in the moment. So you guys can see now as a teacher, I can click on questions, but I like to look at overview and I can quickly see, like, since you guys are teachers, you're not really getting answers wrong, but so obviously when the kids take it, it's a lot different data you're getting. So you can see which questions they're struggling with, um, which ones you need to reteach, which ones they've mastered completely, and you can see their growth. So it usually starts off at a low accuracy and then as you keep doing it, the accuracy gets higher and higher because they're mastering the standards. Um, so it's a really great way to just re be repeating it. I'm going to let you finish the game, though. 
because I know it's kind of fun. The memes are fun. And there's a mistake on here. There you probably is. 37 is greater than, and your choices are 59 and 38. Mm, so that it, makes, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't make any, it, it, there's a mistake. That's a, I, that's what happens when I pick the one I'm not, when I don't plan ahead. I just picked a random one. All right, so if you could do me a favor, if you just click the X on your quizzes, click on the X on your quizzes right here, it should bring you right back to your Seesaw class. It should bring you right back to where you were. So after we play the game together, or sometimes I just assign it, like I said, they can play any time. Then they have, their, they have their template to complete. So this is now their assignment. So this is kind of like the way to be teaching it, reteaching it, reteaching it. And then now it's time for the kids to show you what they know. So if you add the response, here you have the math reps template and it tells you um, one of the numbers. So I gave you guys math reps two, which is the higher leveled one, um, which is why there's probably mistakes. I haven't actually used that one yet. And math reps one would have been asking you more of these types of questions. So I should have given you math reps one to play this, but um, math reps one would have been asking you all about this, just like math reps two did. So then what you would do is now you would, after playing that game multiple times, you would complete this um, template. So if you're making the number nine, I teach the kids how they can change the pen size to make the counters like perfect. And they make the number nine. And I usually show them to do highlighter, like for the um, 10 rod, because it shows way better that way. I use the highlighter. I can like, they, it helps them to actually see which ones they colored in. Um, I usually show them to use the pencil for the tally marks. So I kind of am teaching them how to use the tools and also complete their math reps. Then they can do the same thing with the pen, change the size for the number line. And if they want to do the jumping, they can do that, you know, whatever they need to do. So you would basically complete this um, for the number nine. So after we play the game on edgy protocols, then we do this. And I would assign this every, almost like probably three times a week um, for the first like two weeks of school. And then now they've completely mastered this and I don't need to do calendar time because they've already mastered these standards and I can do it in a lot less time and get onto more things. Then with that level two one that you guys played, I'll show you what that template looks like. So that's what this one is for numbers over 10. And you can see, so the, for the quizzes you guys just played, it would have been this, it would have been this template. So I would tell them, hey, the number that you're gonna do today is 36 or whatever. And they would complete this one for 36. So this one kind of makes a little more sense about the game you guys just played. But this is still the same kind of template where they would complete this with that. So that's one of the ways to do fast and curious with math reps. And like I said, these templates are here for you. And then I can make sure I get those quizzes links and make sure I fix that other one. But um, I do have quizzes for these. And then I also like to do it a lot with addition and subtraction. So here is another one for just um, with addition. The template's already made for you. But what I wanna share with you is this document. On this document, this is hyperlinked for you. So when you click this and open it, this is where you'll have all like the different levels. And this is a work in progress. So as I update this, it will update automatically for you, which is great. But you can see I have addition to 20 and subtraction to 20. I'm getting these done. Then I'm going to be working on doing um, the edgy protocols fast and curious for this. So it will show you level one addition. It brings you the seesaw activity. And right under it is the quizzes. So what's great is you'll have this quizzes right here for you. So all you would do is click assign as homework and then copy the link. When you have this activity, you just um, edit that link. So you have to copy and edit it and edit the link. 
And I'm going to show you that one more time. Three dots, copy and edit, and just delete my link. And right here, add the new one. It's that simple. And then if I wanted to assign this to you right now, I could, and we could do an addition fast and curious. I'm not going to make you do it, but if you want to play with it, you're more than welcome to check it out later. So that's how simple it is to edit that. And this document, like I said, has them all here for you up to all my addition to level 12. So this is addition to 20. It gets harder, obviously, as it goes. And then level subtraction is what I'm working on right now. And as I work on this, I'll be adding to it. So you guys will have it all right here. Seesaw yeah. activity and quizzes. Yes. Yeah. What uh, grade, uh, grade levels uh, is this for? K through two? So this is, so this is really, it's for, so basically I teach first grade. So it's mostly for probably, you could use it in kinder. Some of the addition is going to get hard. Yeah. Do you guys do, what, what is your standard? Do you guys do addition to 10? Yes. Or do you do addition uh, to 20? With, well, um, 10 plus some more after 10 for up okay. to 20. So you would probably just only do like say six levels. You'd have to look at them to see how far they go. But this is addition up to 20. And then this is subtraction. The first couple are within 10 and then it gets a little bit harder. So it's mostly like, it starts with like adding one and adding zero and then subtraction is like taking one away, taking zero away. So you nice. could definitely, and you could, you could alter it too as you need it. So you just might not do all 12 levels. You know what I mean? Yeah, thank you. And then for mixed addition and subtraction, that starts in first grade and goes into second grade. And then addition to 100 is more into sec is more second grade. But then I, I still make them because as my kids, some of my more advanced first graders are doing that way faster, you know, <laughs> by the end of the year. Not right now. Um, not right now. They're not doing, they're learning a lot. So that's all there for you. All of this. And like I said, as I'm updating, this will update live for you. So you'll always have that. Okay, this is one of my favorite ones, eight parts for littles. And I'm gonna show you how um, I actually have been using this this year and how I've already had to like modify it and how I'm, I'll show you like the way I'm doing it. Cause in the past I've taught it when I've done presentations, I haven't taught it this way. But now that I'm starting off the year like this, um, I will show you how I've been using it. So again, on my presentation, it is completely made for you, um, all ready to go. But I'm gonna show you how I modify it. Because like right now, for example, I've already taught nouns and I've already taught verbs, but I haven't taught a lot of these other things. So I'm going to assign this to you and then show you how I modify it. So if you could please go to your activities, I'm gonna walk you through this and show you how I fix this. Add a response. So here's like an example of the eight parts. However, I am not trying to introduce all eight parts right this very second. In Edge Protocols, they do because they're saying like, oh, don't just teach nouns, you know, teach all of this all year. And that makes total sense because like when you think about it, I know I teach nouns, I know I teach verbs, I know I teach adjectives. When I went to second grade, my kids still had no idea what any of those things were and I was still reteaching it. And then when they go to third grade, they still have no idea what any of those things are. They usually have nouns down, um, but they still don't know verbs and adjectives, right? So they're still learning all these other parts of speech. So the eight parts is helping you to constantly spiral, constantly review so that they're really mastering it. So this year, for example, I have taught nouns and I have taught verbs. However, I've also taught common nouns and proper nouns. So what I did was when I made the template, instead of assigning all of these things, um, I changed it. So I made this proper nouns and I made this common nouns and I would do this before I assigned it to them. Right. And then what I did is I got rid of, I'm like, I haven't taught pronouns. That's, that's later. I just deleted all this stuff. I'm like, Nope, I'm not going to even be teaching any of this for a while. And I'm not going to teach prepositions anytime soon either. But I'm teaching, I'm, I know my first trimester, I am like verbs, common nouns, proper nouns. I'm teaching that all the time. Jen, so I before I assign, yes. Sorry. So you're able to change, uh, to alter this um, template. Is that because it was created in Seesaw? Yes. 
Okay. I created oh this God, empty this sauce, so it's so it's easy. Now, what I would do is I would edit it in my library before I assigned it, right? Um, so, like, I did make one called like be, uh, like um, I think I said like nouns. I called it eight parts. I think I called it three parts. So, like, I was remembering. Okay, I'm I'm just teaching three parts right now. Then, when I introduce adjectives, I'm going to call it four parts, and I'm going to have um, the four parts in there. Then after I introduce like prepositions, it's gonna be five parts. So I'm altering the protocol a little bit to kind of meet the needs of my kids more and making it, I think, more realistic for me to teach my students. Um, so now they're gonna master these. And as I teach a new concept, I'm like putting it in and continuing the spiral. Does that kind of make sense? Totally. Because There's I thought- The way that we can alter this for our other languages is just, Yes, for you, it's super easy. Yeah, for you, it'll be super easy. And then what's really great too, is like, say like this picture. So what I try to do is I try to use pictures from stories within my curriculum, because I'm trying to like, especially being virtual right now, there's only I feel like there's less time. And um, so I'm trying to like integrate my curriculum as much as I can into my into this. So I would I try to take pictures, but say I want to put a new picture in here. What's really great is I can just like copy a pic. I can just take a screenshot and copy a picture from my from my curriculum. But I'm gonna keep this one for now. When I do this, I usually yes. Oh, so this I'm so sorry. I had a question. So, um, so the original eight parts. So like last year when we weren't all virtual, I had created it on a slide deck and saved it so that it was something we were working with. And then I thought yeah. to launch that again this, this year, but I didn't know how to do Seesaw at all yet. Have, yeah. Would it also work if I just took that as that, that slide image and just put that yep. in it? Okay. Yes. What you would do is on your template, so on your, um, on your actual template of the activity, yeah. you would do the upload from Google feature. Okay. So I'll show you how to do that on really that quickly. Three, on the dots, right? You add. Yeah. So like, say you, you're like, oh, I like I, all the directions are here for me. I just want to change the template. You just edit this where it says template attached. I would get, I would put my, that I could try a different template. Yeah. You can upload from Google. It's just that whatever you upload from Google won't be interactive. So they would have to add their own labels on top of it. What grade do you teach? Second. And, and of course, so that would be easy. I don't, yeah. See, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Because when I, I didn't introduce it until the, you know, like, I don't know what, in February, and then we were out in March. So right. the class that I used last year, they weren't as resistant to it, but I foolishly, like, launched it, like, you know, wee, look at this, and it exploded yeah. in my face, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get that. Yeah, so the reason, like I said, the reason I only make it in Seesaw is because it's so easy for me. It's already made. For you and to go ahead so and adjust and to... focus on it, yeah. Yes, yeah, and what I found is, like, if I started trying to use eight parts last year, but when I started trying to use it, it, it was also like later in the year when we had already talked about a lot of different things. Right. But when I start, thought about this year, category. yeah. when I thought about this year, I'm like, oh no, there's no way I'm going to start like trying to teach. Cause like, you know, uh, this is probably one of my lowest classes I've had. I still want to challenge them, but I don't want to overwhelm them. And I'm right. like, I'm going to, I'm going to alter this. So now I've kind of come up with the idea of, okay, let's do three parts. Then let's well, do four, like, then let's do five. Is there something already out there on CSS that was created? Cause what I noticed is when I worked with just the subject to teach them subject, they were able to tell me that. But then the next time we were talking about verbs, they completely lost. They just kept saying the noun. Mm -hmm. So then I That's thought, That's why well, I think having, yeah, is using there a it sort? this way will really help. I'm is sorry, there say a again? sort? Ooh, is there a sort? There's not really a great sort. You mean to find activities? Well, like, yeah, like to work, like to give them a bunch of stuff that says, like, really, this is the man and this is, but I don't even know how that you would be able to sort action, but. Maybe they'd have to be people right. eating, but. So like, so then what I would do, so like, say now I have this, right? I have this activity. So now I know I've taught this. So now I'm, I'm using this as my protocols. The first couple of times I do this in my class, I'm going to say to them, okay, boys and girls, what are some verbs? So what, like, for example, when you look at this picture, what are some verbs that we see right now? You can either unmute and say it, or you can put it in the chat. But what are some verbs you see? Plugging. I'm going to pull the chat. Singing. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Plug. Looking, speaking, yeah, speaking, speaking, yeah. So, yeah, plugging. What's a verb, Miss Dean? Remember, a verb is anything you can do. You can stand, you can sit, <laughs> right? And that's good because they're going to ask that. So you, you know, Remember you're it. constantly spiraling. You're constantly spiraling through. 
Then we go common nouns. And the reason I changed it to common nouns is just because that, that's like the biggest thing we're teaching right now is common versus okay. proper. So, okay, common nouns are, you know, boy or man. What, what is a proper noun for a man? You know, and they might say Mr. So-and-so, right? Yeah. Um, so things like that, right? They, they'll say their names, exactly. They'll say little things like that. After we complete this, they're completing it with me. We're doing this together. Then again, in first grade, we're doing this part together. We're writing a story using the words. All right, boys and girls, so let's, let's look at this picture. Let's look at the words. Let's try to make a story. And we start, you know, doing model writing. So now, except for we're doing typing. So like, okay, the man took his, the dad took his daughter to work um, to look at something or whatever. So we start writing the sentence and doing it together. So wait, Jane, so, now, a, you're in the, so when you're doing this to present to them, you're in your student mode? Yes, I, I click on that sample student. Sample student, I student and yet, and you present this on, like that's what you're presenting in that situation. Yes. And then you're teaching what the sample was that, okay. Yep, kind of just like I I'm doing with you guys right now. I say, okay, boys and girls, we're gonna go to our activities. Let's go to that light bulb, right? Okay, gotcha. click on the green ad. And then we, and I say, okay, ready, watch. And then now we do it together. Verbs, boys and girls, what's a verb again? And then, you know, gotcha. I have some people answer. Perfect. Great, I didn't Let's know that I could do that, okay. Yeah. Oh, sample student is great. So that's, that's what we do a lot. Now, once they master this, then I don't have to do it so guided and I can just assign it, but it takes a little while to get them there, especially with our younger kids. And then I always model it once I add a new layer to it. Gotcha. Okay. So we only have like, can you believe it? We only have like 10 minutes left. So I'm going to, I'm going to move on from this one, but you can see, I want you, I want you guys to see quickly how to modify that. So like, let's say I'm going to go to my library really quickly. And I haven't even like, I should, I don't know if John would like my idea of changing it to three parts and four parts and five parts, but it works for, it works for first grade. So what I do is I edit, I click on the three dots and I copy and edit and I change the title to how many parts I'm going to be teaching. So if I'm going to change it and I'm only going to be teaching four parts right now, because then I'm going to introduce the fifth part once they master this. I change it there. I usually don't mess with the example because I don't really care about the, the example so much, but I do change the template right here. The template is what the students are actually going to be seeing and, and working on. So here is where I can click in and delete anything. Or um, Monique, here's where you can actually like change the wording. So if you wanted to do this in French, you could, you could totally do it that way too. Okay. So it's there. If it doesn't, if it doesn't let you edit it, I probably locked it. Okay. So then you just click the three dots and click unlock. unlock okay. Okay. I just and then that. you'll be able to edit. The reason I lock it is just so the kids, um, and the reason I do suggest locking, whatever changes you make, the only ones I leave unlocked are the ones I want them to type in. But if I lock the others so that they don't get in their way and they don't accidentally move them and resize them. So I just lock it to make it easier for the kids. After you've edited it, like say too, you want to delete this picture put in a different picture, then you just check mark it and click save. And now it has saved your new template. And now it's called four parts. So then you can just copy and edit it again and make it five parts. And that just, I just have found that with starting off the year, it's, it works better for me to teach, to like have them reviewing as I'm teaching rather than try to teach them all eight parts at once. It's really overwhelming for them. But this, yes. this way seems to work a lot better. That makes a lot of okay. sense. Exactly. Like, what can they do and how to start working on it? Here's the last one we're going to probably get to, but that's okay. Cause I like, these are usually what I get to. And then I just have a couple other cool templates here for you, but the emoji writing prompts, this is one of my favorite ones. And I'm going to go ahead and um, assign this to you. I have way too many tabs open and um, go to my, remember, use your collections. I'm telling you, it helps you find everything. It's just, it's just like creating a folder. So I'm going to assign you guys an emoji prompt. While you're doing that, Jen, just so everyone's aware, I just reposted the, the slides link in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. So click on your activities and we're going to do an emoji prompt together. Okay. And here's where you're going to see again. Yes, I'm teaching this. The first, um, the first couple times I just teach this. And again, once they master it, now this is an independent activity. I do not have to teach it anymore, except for a couple of my kids who will still need that guided help with their writing. But you're gonna click add a response. And as a teacher, I click sample student so I can teach them at the same time. So they all have this open and I say, okay, boys and girls, let's go ahead and click the eraser. 
we're going to erase only the number one. The number one is right here. It's the purple box. Let's erase only the number one. After you erase the number one, click on the hand and give me a thumbs up, right? Because that's what we're doing online. A lot of thumbs up. Now I have no way of making sure they don't erase all the boxes, but I will say they're generally they're good listeners. Um, and if they erase them all, well, then they're just missing out on some of the fun. So, okay, what, what is that a picture of? It's a spaceship. All right, we have to start a story with a spaceship. Boys and girls, I want you to think with your brain. What's a way, what, how can we start our story with a spaceship? And then I ask a couple kids who wants to share and I pick one that sounds the best. Okay, so does so anyone wanna share a good sentence for starting a story with a spaceship? Anyone who's more creative than me? Chris, I'm sure you have a good one. Blast off. Blast off. The astronaut is. yelled. Blast off. Okay, we're gonna, so then everyone types that sentence with me. I obviously type it much slower. And when I'm doing modeled writing, how do I spell the? Oh, astronaut's a big word. Let me help you, right? And I'm teaching, you know how we teach. Um, so after we do that, okay, we're done with our sentence. Grab that eraser. Let's erase number two. Number two is in the green box. Let's erase number two. Okay, so the astronaut yelled blast off and now I see a palm tree in the water. I have to keep going with my story. So how can I continue it? The astronaut yelled blast off. Then what happened that, that involves this palm tree on the island? Um, the rocket ship. fell and landed on a, an island. After we write that together, eraser, and we keep going, right? Uh-oh, taco. Now, how can I keep going with my story with a taco? And I get a couple kids thinking, and then we write together. He was so hungry, he decided to grab a taco from the taco stand. <laughs> Right, and then you keep going, erase. So it teaches them creative writing. Um, and then we say, sadly, the taco shop was out of tacos. So he didn't get his tacos. And then you just keep going. So you're teaching them like the creative writing and my purpose is to call on different kids to continue the story. So he got in his car and left or whatever. So you're teaching them that creative writing. You're, I would do this very like modeled, getting the kids to collaborate, doing it together. And then as they get to be experts, now I can let this be super independent and they create their own stories. So it doesn't have to be this modeled. And for some of your higher kids, they won't even need you to do this model with them at all. So you can let them take off and be doing this in a small group. There's so many different ways that you can do this assignment, but it really teaches them creative writing not just that hamburger paragraph, you know what I mean? What's great too is on my presentation, I have a whole bunch here for you. So I'm still working on these, but you can see there's eight different ones. So if you click on these activities, this is emoji paragraph one, emoji paragraph two, and so they're all different emoji paragraphs. So they have all different random ones for them to work on. So you can start doing this like once or twice a week they love this. They think it is so fun to make up silly stories and you literally have kids asking to write. And that's what's really great, especially in our younger grades when we are teaching them how to write and it's hard for them. We have to try to make it a little fun for them too. You can also alter it. It doesn't have to be five. If you're doing like, oh, beginning, middle and end, you can make it three emojis. You don't have to make it all five. You can add more if you needed to. So you can totally differentiate this the way you want. So I gave you guys at least three to four pretty good, the Frere model, Fast and Curious, eight parts, and emoji writing. Um, and then I have some templates here for you. There are some speaker notes that show you what to do. So you can totally um, play with this. But like one of my favorites is Buka Kucha. So, which actually Valerie, you know how to say it. I probably said it wrong. I know you're like the pro at pronouncing it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then you just assign this. This is, a, this is a really fun one. I'm going to assign it to you in case you want to go play with it as a student. But um, 
This is a great one. This is one where the draft feature is my friend because they do one page a day, three days a week. So I don't care what days they do it. I just um, tell them that they have to have this done by the end of the week and to try to do a little bit each day. So then like what they do is on this template in here, they type the book, they type the author, and then they use the drawing tools to draw the character and setting. And they add a video to tell me the plot. On day two, they have nonfiction book and I'm starting to teach them how to cite their sources. So they add a fact and then the page is right here. They just have to write the page number. And then day three, they have this. So this is an activity that I give them um, a lot. And every day that they do it, they just draft it until, the, until all three days are done and then they submit it. Um, but this is a really fun one too. So definitely a great way to get your kids mastering the reading standards. So in case, just to let you know really quickly before I let you guys go, if you um, haven't heard, Seesaw does PD in your PJs. So you can check them out. They have all these webinars that are already recorded and you can like watch them. They're about anywhere between 10 and 30 minutes. They also have Seesaw Facebook groups for every single grade level, um, specialties, everything. So definitely check them out. And we have two minutes to spare kind of. So just here's my presentation again. This is my email if you have any questions. This is my website and definitely check it out. Oops, sorry. Definitely check it out because um, I will show you. There are a lot of cool stuff, things on here for you, including past Zooms that are recorded. So if you go to Seesaw, you can actually watch other Zooms that I've done, including a beginner's one, getting started. Next steps, this is teaching you mostly about creating activities. And then I have the Edu Protocols one too, that's a little bit different. So thank you guys for joining me. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and see if you guys have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Awesome, thanks for sharing, Jen. We've gotta do the, the visual applause. We. Thank you guys, fun. thank you so much. Merci, merci. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you create. I know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, have, fun, you have a great birthday on Monday. Valerie. I will. I will. I'm gonna go take a nap now. I know it is lunchtime. So if you're hanging out uh for the, the rest of the day, uh the next session does start at 1.30. Um uh, so go grab a snack, come on back, <clears throat> and we'll see you in another room. Thanks again. Thank you. All right, thank you guys. It's like having coffee with friends. <laughs> <laughs> I like the small group. Small group. I'm shocked. I'm 